It's one of our favorite author. No, maybe the favorite author to have on the show, Tim. Oh, I think she's got some Comic Con stuff to maybe talk about. Some Baby Mouse coming up next. Okay, uh, totally cut out on my end. You froze on my end too. Something happened to you. Okay. On me? Yeah. Yeah. You're crazy. Oh man. Hey, it's can I swap computers out really fast? Sure. How are you guys? No worries. It's all good. So do you have, been, do you have family in New York, or you were vacationing? No, I train teachers back there every summer. So. Oh wow! Okay. You're never a prophet in your own land. I know. It's so true. That is I have to go all the way across the country to have anybody think that I know what I'm talking about to pay me money. That's funny. So, That's yeah. And, and so, where did you buy? Where did you buy your house? It's in Marietta. You live in like Newport or something, right? I mean, we're in Newport. We're right like across from Irvine. Yeah. Right on MacArthur. By the airport. Yeah, kind just of. down from the airport. Yeah. So yeah, are you familiar with the uh, Murrieta, Temecula, Lake Elsinore? No, but I, I want to go to Temecula because everybody says it's like such a cute like wine country getaway. All the grown ups mm -hmm. have been on my well, grown have been. Let me know when you're coming and uh, I've got a guest room and I can uh, do a free Airbnb for you. <laughs> nice. So you guys are Seriously. like the little, the little mini nap of like SoCal, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. It's very popular. So, and they have an old town section there that's kind of uh, westerny, you okay. know, touristy. And uh, besides that, there's not a whole lot out here. Oh, there's Pachanga. What's that? Oh, Pachanga is an Indian reservation, like a casino. Okay. Okay. So I'm not into that stuff myself, but uh, I mean, they have really good like uh, buffets there. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, so you get like the heat, like that Palm Desert gets that level of not as bad. We're, we're in between. So when it's 110 there, it's 100 where I am. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. went to Palm. It, we don't hit 120 like Palm Desert does. Yeah. That I, we went there for the first time over Memorial and uh, wow, it's crazy. No, it's nuts. I don't know how people, I mean, I guess you just live in air conditioning the whole time, you know? Yep. Pretty much it. Wow. I'm getting an echo. Are you getting an echo? Mm-hmm. Uh oh, maybe Scott. Oh, Scott's texting me. Okay, let me try inviting him again. Maybe it's just. Uh... I'm actually at the uh, library right now. They, they have little private rooms at the library, like little carols? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was thinking, like, because I don't have a TV or internet yet. Oh it was like a, a week and a half wait time to, to get them to come and install it. Yep. And I was like, are you kidding me? A week and a half? You're like, we're going to go like, now. I got, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got to have the, well, you know, I've got my phone, but. I know. I can use it as a hotspot, but it's, you know, it just doesn't go too fast with a computer. So, um, yeah, I had to, I'm like, where am I going to go to record? Like, we did some shows earlier, and I drove out to Orange County and did it for the first time ever. Scott and I were sitting in the same room for a show. I know. That's like Matt and I. We're never physically together. It's like so rare. Like, the siblings yeah. are together. Yep. Except it's not Thanksgiving, you know. <laughs> so I don't know if they're going to kick me out of here pretty soon because we already recorded a show. We had all kinds of technical difficulties in the, the last one, but I was hoping it would be better on this one. Well, you know, if it doesn't work, don't stress out. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, maybe we could reschedule yeah, yeah, I'm not when going I have anywhere. internet at my house or something. Yeah, no worries. No worries. When do you go back to school? Pretty soon? Uh, two weeks from yesterday, or my first day with kids. Wow. Yeah, so I've only got really one more week of summer vacation next week. Oh. But the timing was good to move into my house because now at least I have like a couple of weeks to unpack and do all that stuff, you know, before school starts. For sure. And it's a full-time job, so. I know. We, I feel like we move about every four years and it's the worst. Oh, you do? Yeah, well, I'm trying to end that tradition, actually, so. <laughs> Not a good tradition, moving constantly. Yeah. I actually enjoy it. I'm kind of a freak. Oh, 
I, uh, I like, I'm a minimalist, so I start collecting too many things, and then when I move, it gives me an opportunity just to get rid of stuff. And I'm a minimalist too, but the curse is if you're married to a pack rat, which I am, so it becomes like this complete tragedy. You know, every single thing has to be scrutinized, you know. Yes. He still has like high school textbooks and storage units somewhere. I know. In his, he's paying to keep those? <laughs> no, it's like we have a storage unit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something. I'm like, really? We, we don't really need these anymore. He's like, oh, he's you know, that's good. what pictures are for. Yes, exactly. No, <laughs> I just I like take a picture of it and I throw it in the trash. Exactly. Yeah. So. so. Okay, I wonder what's going on with Scotty here. He's probably really frustrated right now. It looks like he's not he's not on the chat. No. Let me um, text him and take see if I can take some pressure off. Yeah, tell him not to stress out. You can always reschedule. He's got enough going on. I mean, with his son being sick and. I was gonna say, you guys, relax, relax. That yeah. sounds like a bizarre virus to me. I, I'm just saying that sounds more like an infection with a fever that high. Yeah. Yeah, and they're just you know trying to like, yeah, his birthday party is on Saturday. So it's like, when do you call it? When do you think he's going to be okay? You know. And does it all families coming to the whole? And friends, yeah, yeah like friends, you know, other little kids with their parents, and yeah, and like, we don't uh, want to spread the virus that has you know the right, right, yeah. yeah. When you know, I know, I know that's wrong. So he's got a lot going on too, um, but we wanted to talk to you because we love talking to you and having you on and. But it was fine. If it doesn't work out, don't stress out, okay? Okay. So how old are all your kids? What What's your range? Uh, my oldest uh, just finished his third year of teaching high school. He teaches wow. math. Yeah. So uh, he's 26, and then my daughter is 24, and my son is about to turn 23, and he lives in Mexico. He's a missionary down there. Oh, wow. I'm not Mormon. <laughs> Not that I'm making fun of Mormons, but <laughs> everybody assumes because I have a 20-something year old, he's, he's a missionary that I'm Mormon. But um, hello, and then I have a hey, and then I have a 14-year-old who's the one that I'm parenting right now from afar. All right, Scott. All right, can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I apologize. It's been one of those days. I think. I think so. No my deal. goodness. Okay, except I got to go get Taylor here pretty soon, so okay. we got to see if we can crank this out and then. Yeah. If it, we have any more delays, I'm I'm gonna have to put it off because he's been hanging out waiting for me already. So yeah, okay. we can schedule so no stress. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, we've been going this whole time. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna have to go in. Oh, I don't want to restart this. I forgot that we were broadcasting live to the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been telling everybody about my kids and my house and all that stuff. Okay, hopefully I didn't say anything that was like my social security number or something like that. All right, Scott. Yeah, well, I'm ready if, you, if, if that's okay. It's, we've been recording the whole time, so. Okay. All right, well, uh, okay, here we go. Woo, you guys are pumped? Go. Go, okay. Me. Hey, everybody, it's one of our favorite authors. No, our favorite author. She's going to give us some Comic-Con. She's going to give us some writing tips. She's going to give it to you next. On the Bedley Brothers. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. And uh, we are so excited to talk to Miss Jenny Holm today. And before we get to her, though, we're going to tell you about uh, one of our favorite websites that we use all the time with our classes, and that's ListenWise. Uh, ListenWise is uh, for listening comprehension for your kids. You know, how often do we really work on that besides making them to listen to us? And ListenWise has all kinds of great content. The, uh, they've got podcast snippets off of NPR, comprehension questions. You can sign up for free. Scott, what else? It's all curated. It's all curated. It's curated for you. And uh, you know what's great? It's really easy, Tim, to find the things that connect with your content and our real-world information that the kids – and really relevant. I mean, a lot of the textbooks that we have are what, 5, 10, 15 years old that we're using? This is content that's happening now 
it's investigative. It helps the kids within my class. We like to look at it through uh, for, for media literacy and just being able to understand what's fake, what's real, and how do we examine news and be thoughtful about that when we're listening to it because we do listen to a lot of our content that we get nowadays. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, when I was checking out what my kids were doing on the state testing, on the Common Core test, they're asking the kids to listen to audio files a lot of times and then answer yeah. questions on them. So how are you going to get your kids ready for that without listen-wise? I don't know of any other way. I mean, unless you're going to throw some podcast at them, but those are geared for adults. So this is geared for your kids. It's uh, grade level appropriate, and check it out at listenwise.com. Easy and to now, use and free. Yeah, and it's free, yeah. Well, I, I guess you can upgrade to a, a better account or whatever, but hey, get started with the free account. See how you like it, right? Yeah. So today Jenny. on the show, we, we've got Jenny. Ah! Jenny Holm. I'm so excited. Yes. And We're so excited to have you back. I'm sure most of you know that Jenny is a, a world famous author of kids' books, and she's written the 14th Goldfish, and she's uh, also written the uh, Baby Mouse series. And I think she's got some new books out that she's going to tell us about today, right, Jenny? I do. I do. So, Wait, what's, what, before you get to your books, uh, what's going on with you? So I uh, I just got back from Comic Con with uh, 130,000 other people. Oh my gosh! It was amazing as always. It's our it's our we go every year. Actually, my kids have grown up at Comic Con. Millie's been going since she was two years old, so uh, they are very old hands. So what and do your kids do when uh, when there's nobody there the rest of the year? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just like the biggest geek fest you can imagine, and um, we had a lot of fun. And I was on a really fun panel with uh, R.L. Stein, who you know, the master of, ah. of goosebumps. And you you think he'd be this very uh, terrifying guy, and he's hilarious. He's just a really <laughs> funny, sweet older man, um, and uh, I was on it with my brother, and uh, Jarek Krasoska, who does uh, the Lunch Lady series, he's really funny too, so uh, it was a really fun panel, so it's really nice to just get out there with, um, uh, Comic-Con is really well attended now by like families, like parents and their kids, so you get to kind of meet the whole the whole crew. How cool. Cool. Sign some books, or? Yep, we did a signing, did a bunch of panels, met, um, and it's fun for me, like, I get to go meet my, you know, my um, comic book heroes. So it's always amazing. All Excellent. right, let's let's hear it. Who are your comic book heroes? Give oh us my, one at least. Oh my goodness, so many. Well, I mean, a lot of my comic book heroes are, um, you know, people who are also in the industry with me who I love, and I get to sort of see them every year. One of them is Nathan Hale. He does Hazardous Tales, which is a nonfiction graphic novel series. Um, he has a new one coming on about World War II. He did one about World War I. Um, so I love seeing him. And just a whole lot of comic troublemakers. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of comics, you've, uh, you've got a new graphic novel out. Is that right? I do. So Baby Mouse, you know, Baby Mouse has been going. We, my brother Matt and I do Baby Mouse, the Baby Mouse graphic novel series. Um, and it started in 2005 came out and since then we've done 20 books and after and baby mouse was is in elementary school in uh, the baby mouse series and we thought you know 20 books is a long time to be in elementary school even for an elementary school mouse <laughs> and uh, we also found that you know since it came out in 2005 our readers have grown up with the character uh, almost two generations have and I have like college kids coming up to me and saying Oh, I remember reading Baby Mouse when I was little, and I, I kind of cry a little inside. <laughs> but um, they they want to kind of take her to middle school, so we um, just launched a new series. It's called Baby Mouse Tales from the Locker, and Baby Mouse is solidly in middle school and has more middle school adventures, and it came out um, July 4th, and in the first volume, it's called Lights, Camera, Middle School, and she joins the film club after school and becomes the director. And that was really fun to do because my in my previous life, before I was a writer, I actually was a broadcast producer. I used to produce television commercials for very glamorous things like Huggies diapers, <laughs> Dove soap, Hershey's kisses. So, so it was my old life. 
Wow, and uh, Jenny, haven't you authored like forty some books? Or I mean, it, I, I, I'm probably not even close, but it's it's somewhere like up there, the number of books you've written. It is, but I feel like with the Baby Mouse and the Squish series, um, it's like 50-50 credit with my brother Matt because we don't have like a completely straight writer uh, illustrator relationship. Although I do most of the writing and he does most of the art, we collaborate a lot back and forth. Um, so he, he gets 50% of the credit. <laughs> you know how so it is with brothers, right? You know, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> I do know how it is with brothers. They usually take all the credit, Jenny. Let me talk to you about that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, wait, we're both brothers, though. <laughs> so that's 200% credit. I'm nice. Well, who's the older yeah. one? That's the older sibling. Actually, I'm the older sibling. I should get all the credit. That's oh, I agree. Tim's, <laughs> much, Tim's much older than me. <laughs> oh, I, I just look I just look older than him. <laughs> yeah, right. No. Okay, so Jenny, uh, tell us about this new book, the uh, Baby Mouse series book. It, does it appeal to middle schoolers then because the, the Baby Mouse is in middle school or is it still kind of appealing to a younger audience? And what, what kind of a kid really gets into these books? You know, what do they like about them? Right, so I think it's like, you know, it's for the, it's for the reader. It's for your classic tween reader, your reader who's on the cusp, who's, you know, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade reader, your dork diaries, your wimpy kid readers. Um, but it's very clean, so you can have it in your elementary school. I think what appeals to it, it's it's a little bit snarkier. Um, it has a little bit more of the real world situations of middle school, those those dynamics. And I think it's just a little bit of the kids have grown up with Baby Mouse. We're finding when we created Baby Mouse originally, it was actually, we kind of had a third grade demographic in mind, but it's actually picked up in first grade now. That's really when it's being picked up. So it's being picked up very young. And so kids are growing up with Baby Mouse. And um, we did keep hearing from middle schools who have Baby Mouse in middle school, but some of the social situations weren't really what the kids their kids were going through so we wanted to kind of have her grow up with them so. oh cool i i think it's those graphic novels are so valuable for uh, i think all the kids that read love them and then also our students who maybe connect visually with something it just gives them that extra boost to be engaged in a book and and so i really love having those in my classroom um so you're also coming out with another book real soon it's um, and it's a sequel, right? It's a sequel. So it's a sequel to um, Sunny Side Up, and yeah. it's called Swing It Sunny. It's coming out in September from Scholastic Graphics, and um, it's historical fiction. It takes place in the 1970s. <laughs> but uh, it, it's so sad, right? <laughs> so that was brutal. I know it's so brutal. Ancient so, history. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so Sunny Side Up, the previous book was about a girl who um, takes place in 1976. It's about a girl named Sunny who spends the summer in Florida with her grandfather at a retirement community. And we find out that she's sent down there because her older sibling is having a lot of drug and alcohol issues. And the parents are trying to figure out how to handle this older kid. And so they kind of get her out of the way. And it's about her learning that it's okay to talk about these things, to talk to her grandfather about it, to open up about things that are bothering you. And then in the sequel, the sequel really picks up. It's a really a, a it's talk about back to school. It's like a school story. It picks up right when she starts school in the middle, I mean, in September of 1976. And, um, and we find out what's happened to her brother. He's, um, he's living in a boarding school now to help deal with his issues and how the whole family has been affected by, um, you know, this happening and how they cope with it. And um, it's kind of a fun trip down memory lane. We reference um, all the, a lot of uh, 1970s TV series like General Hospital and Six Million Dollar Man and other great things in the 70s like Pet Rocks. I mean, <laughs> when I tell kids that people used to pay money for rocks, they don't <laughs> actually believe me. Um, the seventies were crazy when you think about it. So, <laughs> hey Jenny, oh, yeah. I, have, I have a question. Um, Full of Beans is the last book that I, you know, I got a chance to read to my students and things like that. And what I really admire about you, and I, I think you can give us as teachers advice on this, is 
that you were able to write from first, I mean, you were able to write with the perspective of being back in time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a little bit challenging for kids, like first person, real world, their world works. Yep. But it's like, how do you, how much research or what do you do as, as an author to put yourself in a position where you can write as if you're a character in like the 1920s or 1940s or 1970s? How do you do I that? <laughs> So I think, you know, and it's it's hard. I do a lot of research, but what I try to always dial down to is what were kids, what, what is the point of view of a kid at the time? Like, what is the point of a view of a kid today? It's probably not what's going on in politics. It's probably what's going on on their Nintendo DS or <laughs> what they're having for lunch. So I think the most important things in kids' lives are the food they eat, quite frankly, like, you know, a bad cafeteria lunch could probably ruin your class all day. Um, what's going on in their family, um, their siblings, what games are they playing, what they hear, what they sense, what they smell, what music, just very kid-like influences. Mm. And I think what's hard as adults, we tend to think of it as what's going on in the big picture of the world um, and don't remember what it's like to be 10 years old and when you're 10 years old maybe the biggest thing that happens to you is you you left your homework assignment at home and it just completely ruined your life you know and or we just um we don't give it a lot of weight but those are very important things to kids so that's great i mean and then and then just turning that into as a teacher i think the teachers are very sensitive to what kids are going through and trying to th- see things from their perspective so how do we like so you do some research on that you gear it back towards you know what a student might see for your characters uh, and then do you do research around like the bigger picture things that are happening during that time or you know cuz I, I mean full of beans was fantastic at this i i I mean, it took you back in time um, with the language and even the the kind of like um, the, the the phrases that pe- the characters were using in that book were fantastic as far as going back in time. Yeah, I mean, so I, what's funny is that here we're talking on a podcast. I think some of the best stuff for you know, uh, you know, nineteen thirties on is to listen to old radio dramas, and a lot of it's available online and. Um, they weren't as scripted as television shows. And so you can really hear how people spoke to each other. So I would listen to a lot of radio dramas, um, newspapers. We, a lot of stuff is online at the Library of Congress now. A lot of photo history is online. And this is the hard one, I know, because we're a very technology-driven society, and I love tech too. But um, you have to go out and talk to people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard, I know. Um, I get the best research from actually talking to human beings and, mm. um, you know, have them talk to grandma or grandpa and say, what was it like? Or have them talk to mom and dad. What was, what was it really like in the 1970s, you know? Um, <laughs> you could have you know, talked to this grandpa if you wanted to know that. Exactly. <laughs> no, and they will hear it in a different way. I mean, even talking to my 10-year-old, I'll talk about what my childhood was like growing up. I grew up in Pennsylvania. And, we had a pretty free range childhood. You know, we spent the whole day outside and we had no cell phones and um, parents probably didn't know what we were up to, but we-, we How did you survive? We were fine. <laughs> and, my, and my daughter's like, wow, it sounded like it was a lot of fun. I said, it was a lot of fun. And so yeah. it's fun to kind of go down um, the memory lane of, of the, what you might just think of, oh, that what, what it was like when I was growing up. They'll find it super interesting, I think. Cool. Yeah. Now, um, we can edit this part out, Jenny, if, if you don't want to do this. But and we can you can take your time too, because I can edit out their their space. So here we go with uh, that was off the record. Now I'm going to go back to the record. Jenny, would you mind sharing a little bit of one of your books with us? Your new books, maybe reading a little snippet out of it that uh, you find particularly interesting and and fun that our listeners might get a taste of your writing. Sure. All right. Middle school was like a movie, not a romantic smoochy movie or a swashbuckling pirate movie or even a space aliens invade the world kind of movie. It was a monster movie. The hallways were crawling with spooky creatures. You were always having to run for your life, like (laughs) zombies. And everywhere you turned, someone was trying to eat your brains. But sometimes the scariest thing about middle school involved whiskers. And believe me, I know whiskers. 
My name is Baby Mouse, and this is my tale from the locker. Dun, dun, I thought maybe that was written by a middle school teacher. No, well, I, I thought you like <laughs> researched my middle school life. It was... <laughs> That's how I felt as a middle school teacher. It was like, <laughs> boy, that is fun. That is really cool. I'm sure that uh, kids are going to love that stuff. I'm hooked. Aww. Right on. Well, uh, Jenny, we are going to switch gears with you right now, if you don't mind, and, uh, and play a little game with you. All right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Pressure's on. Uh, Jenny is a well-known name, or, you know, a common name, of course, but uh, J-E-N-N-I, the way that you spell it, isn't a real common spelling for your name, I don't think, is it? No. So, you know, in the in the, in the late, in the sixties, late sixties, there are a lot of Jennifers in the world. I personally attribute it to Love Story, the movie, um, where the, you know, the heroine is, is, a, is a Jennifer. But I was named after two uh, grand, great grandmothers who were Jennifers. And my great grandmother from Key West, from Full of Beans, so she lived in Key West, was my great grandmother, Jenny. And she spelled her name J-E-N-N-I-E. -E. So mm -hmm. my mom, yeah decided to name me after her, but take the, take the E off. So that's my nickname. Gotcha. Okay. So today, because of your unusual spelling of your name, exactly. today we're going to see how much you know about other famous Jennies who uh -oh. use unconventional spelling of that awesome name that you have in a game that we're calling Jenny, I've got your spelling. Nice. Jenny, I've got Jenny, your I've got spelling. spelling. Oh my gosh. Eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Two-Tone. Scott, tell our audience who Jenny, with an I, will be competing for today. Jenny, you'll be competing for Laura Carey, a fifth grade teacher in Northern California. If you're able to answer two out of three questions correctly, Laura will be awarded. Well, Jenny, you said it's okay to say this. Some autogra an autograph book from you? Yeah, how about, how about an autograph book of Baby Mouse and of Sunny Side Up? Oh Whoa. my gosh! Two, two books. books. Two for the price of one. Laura, oh. you are gonna. Well, let's hope. Let's hope she can answer these questions for you. Laura. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Jenny. Here we go with our game. Uh, question number one: Have you heard of Jenny's Splendid Ice Cream? No. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, there is a famous Jenny's uh, Splendid Ice Cream, not spelled J-E-N-N-Y, like the typical spelling. It's a high-end ice cream shop with scoop shops spread throughout the United States. Uh, if there's not a Jenny's located near you, fear not. Jenny's will actually ship ice cream to your door. Wow. <laughs> I can get behind that, actually. That sounds yeah. great. Not I'm a bad way to get your ice cream fix. That is, unless you live in Hawaii or Alaska. Uh, well, Do they eat ice cream in Alaska? I don't know. But anyway, how much will it set you back to have Jenny's famous ice cream delivered to your door in Hawaii or Alaska? Is it A? $20. Is it B? $4 million. <laughs> no, $40. <laughs> oh, four, sorry, I misread that. $40. <laughs> or is it C? $50. Okay, think... now that's just for the shipping. That's just for the shipping. Not the ice cream itself. Do you think it's 20, 40, or 50? B, 40. 40? Oh, yeah. close. Believe it or not, they're going to charge you $50 oh my gosh. for one order just to ship it to you. It's probably because they have to, like, you know, drive a refrigerator out to your house or a freezer, I mean, you know, something like that. So. It, would, it would be worth it. Yeah, yeah probably. Nice. It's supposed right, to be nice. really good. They, they have people in Chicago lining up around the block when uh, they open new stores, I guess, or something. So. All right, well, question number two. Richard Jenny is, uh, was a well-known comedian during the 1990s. I'm not going to tell you what happened to Richard Jenny because it's uh, not very appropriate. But, uh, which of these did Richard Jenny not use as inspiration for his stand-up? Is it A? His last name, which, of course, can also be a girl's first name. His, oh, uh, uh, B, sorry, letter B. His upbringing as a Catholic. Or is it C? His roots in Brooklyn, New York. So wait, which one did he not, did he not use? Did he not use as inspiration for his stand-up routines. Is it his uh, name, Jenny? Is it his Catholic background? Or is it being from Brooklyn, New York? It's gotta be A. I feel like the Brooklyn thing is obvious humor. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you got that one right. Yeah, woo! Yep, so he did not use the fact that his name is a, is a girl's, typically a girl's name, but he did talk a lot about being a Catholic and being from Brooklyn. All right, number three. All right. According to the Urban Dictionary, do you ever use that for your writing? Sometimes. Do you really? I, you know, the, the internet is a crazy place where you can find out lots of strange things. Well, here's a strange one for you. The name Jenny is uh, the Latin root for which of these words? Believe it or not, one of these is correct, okay? okay? Jenny is, according to Urban Dictionary, is the Latin root for which of these? Is it A? Sparkalicious. Is it B? Putty sticks. Or is it C? Lollygagging. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of those is right. So you got sparkalicious putty sticks or lollygagging. I'll go with lollygagging. Are you uh, sure? Are you sure? Uh, I'll go with the first one. Sparkalicious? Sparkalicious? I'll go with the second one. No, I the think first one. yeah, sparkalicious. <laughs> sparkalicious. <laughs> what is sparkalicious? I, <laughs> that is correct. Sparkalicious is right. Actually, sparkalicious is a description for anything that is shiny, sparkly, fruity, or fuzzy. Okay. <laughs> this is super embarrassing, you guys, because I'm actually married to a game designer, and we do play a fair amount of games around here. I'm not very good at them, but he would be. Well, good. But and, and you just learned a new word that I expect to see in, in your next book. Exactly. Sparkalicious. Yeah, sparkalicious. <laughs> I mean, sparkly. sparkly. <laughs> Scott, how did Jenny do today? Good job, Jenny. You got two out of three correct, and that's good enough to be a winner. Woo! Yay! Congratulations. You've won nothing. Well, I mean, a, a new reader, maybe. But Laura, she just won some books signed from you. Jenny Holm, one of our favorite, uh, no, our favorite author. Aww. We're so excited <laughs> to have you back in here. And congratulations, Laura. Yeah. Happy and Jenny, why don't you take <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good day for Laura. So, uh, Jenny, why don't you tell our audience how they can uh, learn more about your books and connect with you as an author uh, now that you have some new fans from our, our audience? Yeah, awesome. So, I'm at uh, my website is jenniferholm.com, or you can tweet at me um, at Jenny, J E N N I, Holm, H O L M, L M, on Twitter. No ES. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, actually your first and last name, a little bit uh, off the beaten path, which is good. Yeah. Love it, love it. All right, and uh, Scott, uh, why don't we remind our listeners about ListenWise? And, uh, yeah, if, if you haven't hopped on to ListenWise yet, please do check them out. They are providing an awesome resource for you as teachers. I don't need to say anything more, Tim. They're award-winning, and it's free. Go check it out. Excellent. And uh, don't forget to check out uh, – globalschoolplayday.com, sign your class up. So let's, uh, let's work together to bring this generation of kids back. Uh, let's get them. Playing. I'm gonna start over again on that and edit that part out. That was terrible. Um, and don't forget to check out globalschoolplayday.com, sign your class up, your school up, your district up, the world up for Global School Play Day where we're trying to bring uh, this generation of kids back into the world of unstructured play which they don't do much anymore it's uh they don't ever have to get unboard because they always have a screen to stare at right scott yeah tim in february of 2017 we had over 280,000 kids from 51 different na nations participate in just the third year of this event we need to get a million kids playing if not more we need to get all the kids playing we need to get adults playing we need to get busy tim did i tell you that story that principal that came up and talked to both of us. Did you hear that story yet? Did I hear the story about the principal that talked to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. She made her whole no. staff because everybody from everybody on the school, even parent volunteers that came in, they all had to play that day. Is that epic? Custodians. Yeah, that was so cool. Yeah. She had pictures. It was wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for listening to the Bedley Brothers. We hope that you can go to iTunes and subscribe and write us a review, unless you don't like the show, and then just uh, – don't do that, please. But uh, <laughs> th thanks so much for listening. But most of all, thanks for listening. Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad.